All right, at 8.3b, we're going to look at confidence intervals for means again and kind of walk you through some in special cases. So first of all, what do you do if you think the normal and large sample condition is not met? If your sample is less than 30 and we don't know the population distribution is normal, then graph the sample data. If there are not outliers and strong skewness, then it's plausible that the population is approximately normal. It's not the sample that's normal, it's the population is approximately normal. So it's important that you look for that. Now, how do you lose credit for this on the test? Well, um, if you don't include the sample data graph, if you needed it, and if you include the graph, but then you say that, oh, look, it's about the sample being normal, it's not. You have to include that the condition is about the population being normal. Okay, it's, a, it's an important distinction to make. Yes, you can use your calculator on the do step. It's going to be like this. You hit stat, test, and you're looking for test number eight. It says T interval. Now, when you do that, um, be careful that when you show the work on your paper, you use the correct work and you show the right work. But when you hit the T interval, um, it's going to come up looking like this. And there's two ways you can do it. Notice the input. There's a data input and a stats input. Stats input is when the question gives you the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. Okay, it gives it to you. The other option is the data option. If you click data, it's going to say, okay, where's the data? And that means that you have inputted it in your calculator in list one, and then you just adjust the confidence level, and then it will generate the numbers for you. But you have to decipher which method are we doing, stats or data. So be careful with that. All right, let's try an example. As part of the final project in AP Stats, Christina and Rachel randomly selected 18 rolls of a generic brand of toilet paper to measure how well this brand would absorb paper or water. Sorry. To do this, they poured a fourth of a cup of water onto a hard surface and counted how many squares it took to completely absorb the water. Here's the results from their 18 rolls. Construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for mu, that mean number of squares of generic toilet paper needed to absorb a fourth a cup of water. So here's their data. We have raw data here. We don't know anything about the population and we know we only have a sample of 18. So let's walk it through the state plan do conclude process. First, what are we doing? We want to estimate mu, the true mean number of squares of generic toilet paper needed to absorb a fourth a cup of water with 99% confidence. Let me stress, you are not finding mu, you are estimating mu. So be very careful that you don't use the word finding. Okay, same question. We're going to do the plan step. So we want to name our test. So we're going to construct a one sample T interval if our conditions are met. Do we have randomly selected rolls of toilet paper? Yes, we do. Is it reasonable to assume that there's more than 10 times 18, 180 rolls of generic toilet paper? Yes, that's true also. So we, it's independent. And then lastly, the normal large condition. Well, 18 is less than 30, and we don't know anything about the population, so we have to graph, graph the sample. So the easiest way and the fastest way in a situation like this is just to create yourself a dot plot and label it accordingly. So when I do this, if I've, if I've created it, I've shown it, but then I have to make a statement, what is it telling me? The sample data has no outliers or strong skewness, so it is reasonable to assume that the population is approximately normal. Don't say it's exactly normal, but it's approximately normal, and you can use that little symbol, that's fine. All right, the do step. All right, so the first thing that I would do in a problem like this before I really start writing anything down is to enter my data into list one. Okay, so I've taken the time and I've entered the 18 pieces of data in list one. Then I would go to my T interval test and I would choose data because I had to enter it and it makes sure it's coming from list one, which it is. And then hit the interval, let it calculate it for me. All right, now why did I do this? Because notice it gives me the summary statistics right here that I need for the confidence interval. So now I know that X bar is 24.94 and I know that S is 2.86. T star, I have to find the old fashioned way, but I did that. T star is 2.898. Then I can show my work. I can build the equation 
but I already have the answer. It's right there. So I can then just show my answer like such. Now, the last step that is to conclude, make a conclusion. We are 99% confident that the true mean number of squares needed is between 22.9 and 26.89 squares. All right. All right, one last thing for you in this chapter. How can we choose an appropriate sample size when we plan to calculate a confidence interval for a mean? Well, ideally, we would use our margin of error formula, which is T star times, um, so ideally we would use the margin of error part, which is T star times S over the square root of N, and we'd solve it for N. But the problem is we need to know n to find t star, right? You gotta have degrees of freedom, which is based on our sample size. So the only thing we can do then is we pretend that we know sigma, and if we know sigma, then we can use z star. So we have to use this to find a sample size when we're using means. And they have to give you the sigma value in the problem in order for this to work. You would not have to generate that. They would have to tell you what that is. So it's just tricky because if you're asked to find sample size with an, a means problem or averages, you revert to using Z star. Okay? Now, we use a reasonable sigma from a previous study to find it. All right, let's look at this example. Administrators at your school want to estimate how much time students spend on homework on average during a typical week. They want to estimate at the 90% confidence level with a margin of error of at most 30 minutes. The pilot study indicated that the standard deviation of the time spent on homework per week is about 154 minutes. How many students need to be surveyed to estimate the mean number of minutes spent on homework per week with 90% confidence and a margin of error of at most 30 minutes? Okay, so go back to the formula and let's kind of break it down. What do we know? Okay, we can find our uh, Z star because we know our confidence level is 90. So we can find our Z star is 1.645. We know the margin of error has to be less than or equal to 30 minutes. The standard deviation they told us up here is approximately 154 minutes. And then the N is the unknown. So we're gonna plug in what we know and start to solve this guy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, divide by 1.645, and this is what I have. Then again, I don't want a less than here, I want a greater than, so I'm gonna take the reciprocal of both sides and flip my inequality. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by 154. Then I'm gonna square both sides to get rid of the square root. And now I have n is greater than or equal to 71.31. But again, we can't have 0.3 of a student. So to be on the safe side, we round up to the next whole number. So we need to sample at least 72 students. 